Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to another Spend the Day with Me vlog. Today, I have devoted and carved out the whole day to give myself time to basically zhuzh things up around the house. I have like a little to-do list of little things that I wanna do around the house, just kind of like organizational, switching things out, fixing things up, adding things in. If you guys have been subscribed to me for a while, you know that I've been doing this series on my channel for my home decor updates. And those are usually, like I wait until I have bigger updates to share with you guys around the house as far as like different construction projects and getting new furniture and like adding stuff in as far as like decor and stuff like that. I usually only do those episodes like once a month because I'm trying to wait until I have like just bigger updates to share, I guess. But there's a lot of like smaller stuff that goes on in between those updates that doesn't necessarily make it into those videos. So I thought I might as well vlog today and just kind of share with you guys some of the smaller things that, you know, I do around the house in between those bigger home decor updates. Now, I don't want to say my house is in shambles right now, you know, I don't know if this would qualify as complete shambles. Let's see, the closet, you know, the closet, she, the closet not doing too bad, but there's definitely things out of place. There's definitely things that need to be reorganized and just switched out and zhuzhed up, like I said. So that's gonna be my, my goal for today is to just get the house looking a little better. Today is also Wednesday, which is cleaning day. Uh, I have a housekeeping service that comes every Wednesday, hallelujah. One of my best adult investments is having this cleaning service come once a week. It makes a world of a difference highly recommend if you're able to invest in something like that. I think they're starting in the kitchen right now. So they're gonna be doing the actual like cleaning, you know, like cleaning the floors, cleaning things down. I'm gonna be doing more of the organizing, rearranging, and just different little things like that. So hopefully this video will be very satisfying. You know, the before and after. Um, I know you guys like the kind of clean with me and organize with me type videos. So I think I'm going to start in here. I have a few things that I wanna do in here in my bed room okay so first things first I think I'm gonna start with my bed this is what my bed is currently looking like I didn't even make my bed this morning because I already knew that I was about to switch my stuff out don't even don't I don't even want to show you I don't even want to show you an up-close look at what these white sheets and white pillowcases are looking like right now. This is an old, what do you call this, duvet cover that I don't even know where I got it from, but it's literally stained. I don't know if you can see that yellow stain right there. Don't know what that is. I don't think it's a bodily fluid because it's like neon yellow, <laughs> but it has a few stains like that on it that I have not been able to get out. And it's also kind of, it's getting pilly and it's getting kind of like, when something's not holding up in the wash and it gets like that weird texture to it. I don't know if y'all could see the little, fuzz balls that are getting on it and these little holes, which I'm not sure what's going on there. It wasn't me. It was not me. But I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's all over the whole surface of this duvet cover. And my pillowcase is also stained. This is mainly from sleeping improperly with fake tan on. So long story short, I wanted to switch out my bedding and also just upgrade it because this, I don't, like I said, I don't remember where I got it from, but it was like cheap. I just want something plain white. I just got the first thing that I saw and it just, you know, it shows. So I wanted to kind of upgrade to something more luxurious. So I got the Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle from Brooklinen. And I don't know if you guys remember when I have posted about Brooklinen in the past, but they make some amazing linens, sheets, towels, all that type of stuff. I have really luxurious, thick, fluffy, extra large, white bath towels that I got from them before. I've also had a sheet set from them before, but that was back when I was in my town home and I had a queen size bed. When I moved in here, the queen size bed got put in the guest room. So now the guest room has that mattress and the nice Brooklyn and sheets. And for some reason, I didn't get them for myself up until now for my actual king size bed now. So I love this brand. Super just luxe, high quality, but not for 
the luxe high quality price. Like y'all always hear me say in my like home decor update videos, this is my big girl house and I've been trying to get in the mindset of like having nice big girl stuff in this house. And what I mean by that is just like investing in higher quality pieces. And also too, in my bedroom specifically, I was really going for like a high-end hotel is basically what I wanted my bedroom to look like. So that goes along with like having the more high-end sheets and furniture and decor and just giving that overall feel to it. But from shopping around, I've seen that high-end bed sheets can cost like upwards of $500 for a, sh a sheesh for your bed. And so that's why I ended up just getting whatever little cheap stuff I can find for this bed. But it doesn't, it's not, it's not giving. It's not giving the high-end hotel feeling that I wanted for my room. That's the great thing about Brooklyn Inn is that they give you the quality, but they're able to give it to you for a more affordable price because they cut out the middleman. Brooklyn Inn's whole philosophy is that they believe that everyone deserves simple, beautiful home essentials without the luxury markup. Okay, so. Dun, 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 dun. How cute. I remember this from last time. Came with a really cute tote bag. You can use my code Raven to get $20 off any order of $100 or more. All the info and links and everything will be in the description box, so definitely check that out. So yeah, here are the pillowcases. And again, I got the Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle. So it comes with the Lux Pillowcase, the Core Sheet Set, and then duvet cover. Really nice packaging. Everything is super high quality. You can just tell from the way that it's packaged. But again, it's without that luxury markup because really nice, like luxury expensive sheets can be upwards of $500. Whereas these ones are anywhere from 200 to 250. So it's literally half the cost, but you still get the luxury experience. You know, it comes in a cute little box, cute little packaging. So here is the pillowcase. I just went for the simple white, but they do come in over 20 different styles and colors that you can choose from online. Of course, y'all know me. I like the simple white for the vibe that I'm going for in my room. So that's just what I got. So here's the pillowcase, super soft and luxurious. Literally, it's like when you go to a nice hotel and they have those nice sheets, that's exactly what this is, but again, for like half the price. And with this uh, Lux sheet bundle, instead of buying individual items, you're actually saving 25% by getting the bundle. So that's why I went with this one. So here are the sheets. Again, just plain white. I didn't get anything, <laughs> I guess, super interesting as far as the color, but again, they do have a bunch of different colors and patterns to choose from if that's more your vibe. So you do end up with a total of four pillowcases with this bundle because the sheet set comes with the two pillowcases and then you get the two other pillowcases separate. So that's perfect for me because I do have my four pillows. And then you've got your fitted sheet with the elastic and then your top sheet with, you know, the nice clean finished edge on it. Literally, I just stayed at a nice hotel when I went to LA and I feel like this, I feel like they had Brooklyn in. And then you have the duvet cover. The other thing that I like about Brooklyn and that I know from having them before, and it even says it right here, it says more washes equals more softness. So what are you waiting for? So literally these sheets get better the more you wash them. Instead of the sheets that I currently have that are falling apart and getting holes in them <laughs> when I wash it, these just like soften up even more the more you wash them, but they don't like fall apart and pill up. They are like super high quality. You know, they hold up really well, but they just get softer the more that you wash them. Okay, so since these just came fresh out of the package, I do want to wash them first before I put them on my bed. So I'm gonna set these aside as like their own load. And then I'm also going to strip my bed of the current sheets and get it prepped to be made up with the new fresh stuff when this stuff comes out of the dryer. Brooklyn and sheets are waiting for their turn in the wash. Um, cleaning ladies already had some stuff going, so when this is done, those will be put in. They have like a whole system that they do in here in the laundry room. That's the other reason why I wanted my laundry room to like be very nice and functional and stuff because it just makes days like today that much easier. Okay, so here is the old duvet cover that I am donating. 
I just put it in a bag to kind of protect it and then I have my little donation pile in here in the garage I always just like collect things as I go. I have a few furniture pieces I also have my old office chair in the donation pile along with a few decor pieces That I've added to the pile. I have a whole ceiling fan <laughs> It's in pieces, but this ceiling fan, this fluffy stool, this little table, these little random things, and the chair all needs to be donated because I got a new chair, and I think this will be y'all's first time seeing the new chair. This is the new chair. I ended up getting the one that I talked about in my last home decor update video, the one I said I was thinking about getting, but I wasn't too sure. I just ended up getting it because I was really tired of my old chair. So this is it. It's like a velvety suede type material and it's an off-white color with the brass bottom to go with all the brass stuff that I have in here, of course. But the thing with this chair is that it's white and this is gonna be a chair that I sit in all day, every day for the most part. So I wanted to figure out a way to like protect it from getting stained and beat up. Hi, Bougie. Okay. So I got this Scotch Guard Fabric Water Shield Long Lasting Protection Waterproof Fabric Spray. I watched some videos on it and stuff like that, and people say it works really well to just spray down any furniture that you want to protect and it makes it kind of like water resistant, stain resistant, and to where if you do get anything on it, it's easy to clean off. So I feel like this would probably be the best bet for this chair. Another view of what the chair looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna scotch guard this chair, y'all. And I'm glad that I watched like YouTube videos on it because uh, number one, they said to do it outside because it does have like a smell to it, like some fumes, I guess. I'm in my garage with the doors open. And then number two, they said that you really need to cover up any metal parts because this stuff actually really messes up metal. They also said that you should vacuum, yeah. I need to go ahead and get my little vacuum thing to make sure that it's fully, fully clean before I like spray it down because I think otherwise you're kind of like sealing in the dirt or whatever. So let me get my little vacuum. This chair is gonna be really hard to keep clean. I already know. Shake well and then hold about six inches away. A slow sweeping motion. Two light coats are better than one heavy coat. Okay. Here goes nothing, y'all. Oh yeah, it definitely has a smell to it, like spray paint type smell. so hot out here but I'm gonna do one more coat over the whole chair and then just let it dry before I bring it back inside and hopefully this helps to actually keep this chair looking good okay so the chair is dry good news is it doesn't look any different I was worried that the spray might like darken or like alter the color of it and it also doesn't feel any different it doesn't feel crunchy or anything that was the other thing that I was worried about even though they said it wouldn't do that I was like I don't really trust it but good news same color, same texture, hopefully just a bit more protected. All right, y'all, so the cleaning ladies just left. House is smelling good, smelling clean, looking spotless. Floors are clean, all surfaces are clean. Everything is like vacuumed and dusted. It smells very fresh in here. Look how clean and fresh and just clutter-free the kitchen is looking. I'm realizing now that I didn't really get a before shot. <laughs> of what it was looking like in here this morning before they came, but just imagine clutter, dishes, and hoopla. And I love how they always do a nice little folded origami moment with all the paper towels and toilet paper and tissues and stuff. I feel like it's also been a while since I've like shown y'all kind of an overview of the main area of the house. It wasn't really a part of like my recent home decor update videos, but this is what it's looking like. Newest additions would be that thing. And I kind of switched up some of the stuff here. Oops, these are off center. We don't like that. My Virgo senses are tingling. Okay, there we go. Da, 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 da. I still really need a rug. <laughs> I still really, really, really need a rug for in here. I still don't have one, which is ridiculous, but 
we're working on it. And then also the entryway, I think the newest thing are these baskets. Since my last home decor update, I added these baskets and I also took off the few little things that I did have on this table because I put them in my office. Books that I thrifted, these and these. And I think I also had this bowl sitting there, but I felt like those went really well in here. So now this table is empty and it definitely needs like a lamp or a vase or some different books or a different statue or something like that. But I did add those baskets. And as for my bedroom, the cleaning ladies went ahead and started making my bed. So these are the freshly washed new Brooklinen sheets and duvet cover. So they switched out the duvet cover, put the new one on the actual um, little insert thing. They laid the sheets out, but since these are fresh out of the wash and they were actually like still a little bit damp when they put them on they're a little bit wrinkly so i think i'm actually going to either steam or iron it to just smooth it out and make it look perfect because i'm psycho like that but they did a good job of putting everything on and they do like this cute little hotel fold on it every time which i love and then i still need to put all the pillowcases on but first so just like with the sheets and the duvet cover, I want them to be completely wrinkle-free and crisp and perfect. So these are the pillowcases, the new Brooklyn pillowcases that just came out of the wash. And I was thinking, since I have my new little setup here, drape them over here like so, and use this as a steaming station because I have a little handheld steamer. Shout out to my laundry room organization. So obviously I have an iron and I could definitely just iron them. That's kind of what I normally do, but I feel like steaming might be just a little bit faster and easier if I could just like go over it real quick. The housekeeping service, the like package that I have, they do do laundry and bedding, like change the sheets, wash the sheets, wash the clothes, fold the clothes, put away the clothes, whole thing. They don't iron the pillowcases or steam the pillowcases or sheets before they put them on because that's just like a little, a little extra. I mean, I can maybe ask them to add that on for like an extra fee. But these are the things that I kind of like to do. I like to just do certain things myself because I am a Virgo and it does bring me joy. I need some clothespins. I was gonna buy some clothespins to put in a jar just literally for the aesthetic, just to have them sitting in a jar for like decor for the laundry room. But now I'm like, I actually need some so I can like clip things to this little hole. Okay, haha, just kidding. Steaming was a cute idea. I wanted to use my little setup, I wanted to try it, but it just wasn't, it wasn't giving. It wasn't hitting the same as a good old fashioned press uh, to really get the wrinkles out. So I'm gonna switch over to ironing. All you really need is a good old thick towel. DIY ironing board gives me more surface area to work with. <laughs> Let me show you the before and after so you know I'm not crazy. Okay, here's a pillowcase fresh out the wash compared to after it's been ironed. Can you see the difference? It looks better, okay? And voila, freshly washed, dried, and ironed pillowcases. This is luxury. This is luxury for free. Do you have an iron? Do you have pillowcases? Iron your pillowcases, free luxury. There's probably some hack that I don't know about for putting pillowcases on, especially on a king pillow, because king pillows are like extra long. <sighs> oh, okay, never mind, that was easy. Sometimes they don't want to go in there, but this one just slipped right in. Oh, it's just nothing like fresh linens on a Wednesday afternoon. Oh, that looks nice, yeah. Then I have these other pillows. I have two different types of pillows. Regular, I don't know what it's called, just your old fashioned normal pillows. And then these that are like memory foam. And they're a little bit chubbier, but they still fit. You know, sometimes you want options. Boom, baby. Can you feel the hotel quality through the screen? Can you smell the fresh laundry through the screen? And now for the part that might be a little bit ridiculous, but I don't think it is. I'm gonna iron my bed. I have this little extension cord by my bed that I normally use for my phone charger. So I'm gonna plug my iron in there and I'm literally going to iron my bed. <laughs> I do this 
every day, all the time. No, I'm not that much of a psycho. I'll be honest, the last time that I did this was like one of the last times that I wanted to either take pictures of my room or take video of my room for like a home decor update. You know, I just wanted it to be camera ready. And then I think I did it one other time just because, just for my own satisfaction. Obviously it's a little much to just be doing this every single time, but every once in a while for that extra oomph. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, the one thing that I do do all the time, these types of pillows that have the little border, I don't like how it looks when it gets all like wrinkly. So if you iron it, it looks so much better. These were washed last time and I forgot to iron them. So I just took them off the pillows and I'm going to really press these edges to make them like, make the border stand up nicer. This is something that's definitely worth doing because these are decorative pillows. So, you know, you wash them every now and then and then if you iron them after you wash them, it'll stay like that, you know, until you wash them again. So this is just like a one-time thing that you have to do if you ever do wash them. And it's definitely worth doing because it's gonna make the pillow look way better. Okay, so I ironed the border on these other little decorative pillows that I had. It didn't make them completely perfect as when I first bought them, but it definitely helped a little bit just to kind of help, you know, straighten it out and help the border stand up nicer. So to finish making my bed, I'm doing it hotel style. Again, that's the whole theme. So I've seen it done like this in some hotels and also like luxury home decor websites and catalogs. You put the two pillows down flat like this, like the sleeping pillows, instead of like propped up, you know, like this way. And then you have your decorative pillows that go propped up in front of it. Now, I'm not a professional, so this is not gonna be perfect either way, but. And you karate chop them to give it that little fluffy effect. Ta-da! There we have it, super clean, fresh, Soft, luxurious, silky smooth bed. Smells so good in here. This Brooklyn and set is so soft and luxurious. Like I keep saying, I'm so excited to sleep in my bed tonight. And once again, y'all, if y'all wanna check out the Brooklinen Lux Sheet Bundle or any Brooklinen products, they are having their Labor Day sale right now. So again, you can get 15% off. Link is in the description. And if you're seeing this video after the Labor Day sale is already over, you can use my code RAVEN to get $20 off any order of $100 or more. I don't even have to sleep in this bed yet to let y'all know that these sheets are amazing and so soft and so luxurious and comfortable because like I said, I already had Brooklyn and sheets on my bed before in the townhome and I've had them up in the guest room already for a couple years now so I've already had years worth of experience with these sheets so I can tell you from experience that they are so worth it they're so nice literally luxury hotel quality highly recommend also by the way here's what the bathroom looks like now that it's nice and clean flashback to how junky it was looking uh this morning <laughs> but now it is beautiful and sparkling clean. Countertops are cleared off. Everything is scrubbed down. Floors have been scrubbed down as well. I really need to actually put the um, paper towel things that I use in the actual container. I bought this so that this wouldn't have to be sitting here and then I got lazy. So I need to refill that. There we go, much better. It's the little things. Speaking of little things, I ordered a few little things to zhuzh up a few little things around the house. A few more things that I wanted to do today and they just got delivered, perfect timing. I got, I think it's this one probably. Yes, I got an acrylic spice shelf thingy. Hopefully it fits and hopefully it works. So it's literally just these four plastic pieces. They didn't have this size in clear or else I probably would have gotten clear, but I don't think the black is bad. Plus it's going to be inside of a drawer, so it doesn't really matter. But the reason why I got that is because up until now, my spices have been right here, like right here by the stove in this upper cabinet. I have the cute labeled ones from way back when we first did my pantry organization makeover video. I still use these 
Lazy, still love these, but I had gotten this double layered Lazy Susan thing for my spices. Originally, I put them in the pantry because it just looked cute with everything else that I have labeled in there, but then it was really annoying whenever I'm cooking something to be, you know, going all the way over there to the pantry to get a spice and then put it back. Like it just was not convenient to have it like that. I've since moved it right here, which is super convenient, but I do not like this thingy. It's like not very sturdy as you can see. It's kind of sitting sideways and it's not actually doesn't really turn very well. And it's annoying because the way that my spices fit on here, these are not all of my spices. I actually was testing out what I'm about to do. So I moved a lot of them down here, but with all of my spices actually on here, it's not just like one layer. They're like all blocking each other in the middle. So you can't, you have to like go like this to get to the one behind it and you can't see them all at once. Like it's not super functional. I saw on like a TikTok where this girl had these things and had her spices in a drawer. And I have this drawer right here by the stove. So it'll still be in the same you know, vicinity, very convenient to use when I'm cooking. I used to have my cutting boards in this drawer. That's why I have it labeled with cutting boards. I also had space down here. So I'm like, I could just put the cutting boards right there and I can use this for the spices. So I'm really hoping that this will work. So I'm gonna take all these back out. Look at my cute little bottle. Everything's labeled around here. Let me look at the instructions for this little thing. Double-sided tape. Oh, so you can like tape them together. Oh, ooh, satisfying. Let's get a close-up on that satisfying footage. I think it goes like this and they gave me these little sticky tabs to like tape them together so they don't slide around. But let me just test it out first. And the thing I was worried about is if the drawer would be able to close. Oh, yes. I wish it was just a little bit wider because I have extra space on either side. Okay, boom, I got it all taped together. So now it's like one little piece. I have 19 little cute labeled spice jars. Perfect, I have five extra spices that need to be put into the cute jars. So that'll actually fill up the drawer perfectly. So we do still have like some ugly ones that need to stay up here, but the main spices and seasonings down here. And I like that, I like this. Let's see. We gotta test, test the functionality. What happens when you open and close? This little thing is shifting a little bit because I do have extra space. I need to put something to kind of like block it from moving. I could have sworn that I had some extra jars left over from when we originally did this. I could have sworn I had some in this cabinet over here and I was gonna go ahead and like re-jar all of these, but I can't find them now. So I'm gonna have to order a set of some more of these jars off of Amazon and then I would need my mom to come help me with the Cricut labels anyway, uh, or at least bring her Cricut machine back over here because she took it to her house. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to finish off the jars today. That'll have to wait for another day, but at least I know that this works and I have space for everything. I really like this so much better because you can see every single spice and it's so easy to grab and put it back. There's not like layers, there's not a spice behind another spice that you can't see. So I think this is gonna work a lot better than this little rickety thing. So I can move this. Oh, what is this that was underneath it? <laughs> I mean, this definitely still works and maybe I can use it for something in the pantry. I don't know. I'll just put it in here for now. But what I was really thinking of putting in this space now that it's empty is putting like my other little cooking oils and things just so that that's more convenient to grab. I normally only keep this right here, which is just olive oil because I use that all the time when I'm cooking. So I like to just have it right by the stove. It's got the little spout and 
and everything on it so I can easily, you know, drizzle some olive oil. But I have like these other ones, like the spray olive oil, this other just like cooking vegetable oil, just a couple of other things that I cook with a lot that I think would be nice to actually keep over there by the stove. I feel like this entire Lazy Susan may not fit in here because I think it's just a little bit too big. Oh, I think it fits perfectly. Wait, oh my God, it fits, it just barely fits. Like literally if it was one millimeter bigger, it would not fit. That is so, I was like, there's no way this is gonna fit. It literally fits perfectly. Okay, cool, bet. Yes, okay. So now all these other little cooking oils and different things that I cook with a lot can be right here. Easy to grab. Yes. This other box should be the hangers that I ordered. Similar hangers to the regular ones that I have in my closet that I've talked about before, but these ones have clips on them like that. Okay, so these are the regular hangers that I have in my closet. All of them are like this so that they're all matching because that is very satisfying and it feeds my Virgo soul to have matching hangers. So they're like these black, super skinny felt hangers. I love them, they work super, super well. Highly recommend, I know I've talked about them before. And then the other two types of hangers that I have in here are this kind. I have a few of these which are just purely clippy and then this kind which are pants hangers so it doesn't have the other side on it so you can easily slide the pants off and on also super slim also have like this grippy material so it doesn't slide off so these work super well for hanging pants specifically so these are my pants hangers these are my shorts hangers because they work perfectly for shorts as you can see but I got these hangers Oh, they're all clipped together? Who decided that was a good idea? Anyway, I got this type of hanger because it's double duty. It's a regular hanger on the top, but it's a clippy hanger on the bottom. So these have their purpose, right? And obviously my regular hangers have their purpose too, but this is dual purpose because I have a lot of little matching set moments like this which this is how i've been hanging them so far so this is like a little top and a skirt so with this type of hanger that i just got i can actually properly it's hard to do this standing up in front of the camera but clip the skirt on and then i can also put the top on the hanger as normal too. This top is kind of annoying because it's like a crisscross top. So I thought that would work a lot better and just lay flatter in my closet to help save space. So like here's another one of how I had it before, like folded over and just like thrown on there any kind of way, which you know, this works. Am I being a little bit ridiculous <laughs> by having special hangers for everything? Yes, okay, I get it. This works perfectly fine and I didn't really need to get these hangers but these are the things that I enjoy in life, okay? This brings me joy, and I should be allowed to have this joy. <laughs> and I just, I just, I can't get over the fact that like it coordinates. Like this new clippy hanger matches my regular hangers because they're like the same. The coordination, the matching, it just feeds my soul. Okay, new day, same hat, because I still don't feel like styling my hair. My camera and I both ran out of juice yesterday, but we are back next day to finish up the little tasks that I wanted to do around the house. I have my little clippy hangers, and like I said, I'm just going to rearrange some of my clothing. You know, again, these hangers that I already have, they definitely still work, but also the other thing was I only have a few of these and I needed more anyway. So instead of just getting more of these exact ones, I just thought these might be a little bit better. This way all of my little matching sets can be together. Look, how perfect. I really wish my whole entire wardrobe, like pajamas, underwear, t-shirts, like every single piece of clothing that I own could be hung up. I wish I had the closet space to hang up every single piece of clothing that I own because even with the Marie Kondo method of folding your clothes, how I have my stuff folded and I'll show y'all how I have it, even with that method, which does make it better, I still just really prefer having my stuff hung up because number one, it doesn't get like all wrinkled and creased. Number two, you can see everything. Like the way that I can see every single piece of clothing and I can like, 
you know, take something out and be like, hmm, do I want to wear this? Let me see, hold it up. No, I don't want to wear that. And then just put it back. Like I don't have to refold it. I don't have to mess up the whole drawer. Like having stuff hung up is so much better than having stuff folded into drawers. In my next house, if and when I get to a point where I upgrade from this house, I am going to design my bedroom and my closet to be where everything gets hung up. That's gonna be, that's my new life goal. Just imagine, just imagine how amazing that would be. How can I put this on? Now, see, I will say certain things are hard to hang up. <laughs> But they make so many different types of hangers these days. They really do make a hanger for everything. They probably make an underwear hanger. Boom, okay, see, you just have to know what you're doing. You can make anything work on a hanger, I'm sure, if you have the right hanger and if you know what you're doing. And just imagine, like, oh, that is literally my dream to have every single thing hung up perfectly. Anti-folding 2022, I'm starting a campaign. <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> Okay, so in that process, ended up finding three articles of clothing to donate. I freed up two of these other kind of clippy hangers. I freed up like 12 regular hangers that I can now use for like my other like shirts and dresses and stuff. And then, cause I was completely out of these. And then I still have the other half of the set of the new clippy hangers that I got. So now I am more than prepared for any like new clothes that I might get or whatever. This section is definitely looking better because I put all my mini skirts on the new clippy hanger. So we have denim shorts on these type of hangers hangers, mini skirts on these new type of hangers, and then long pants on my um, pants hangers that I already had. So that's like nice and organized. I could probably do a better job of color coordinating it because it's kind of a little bit mixed up, but it mostly looks good. Um, I literally have like no space in this pants, skirts, shorts section though. So I can only get new stuff if I donate some existing stuff. So that's gonna be the rule for this section definitely but look how satisfying that looks and then we've got this section over here now which is the matching cohorts section so all those little outfits that have a matching top and bottom now kind of have their own little section over here and the proper type of hanger for that okay so one of the other things that i wanted to get done is to reorganize my entire jewelry collection because it's getting out of hand i have jewelry on top of this nice stand in this little travel thing but also just in like these little boxes and just laying around and I have this drawer I also have jewelry lingering on this other dresser over here and then in my closet I have this section of my closet which is really supposed to be like the main jewelry designated spot I have like the little tabletop things and then i also have this whole drawer i have some more jewelry just sitting on the floor over here in these other containers so yeah this was supposed to be the the cute little organized jewelry station so when i'm getting dressed i have the mirror right here i can you know put my jewelry on see how it looks have it all be nice and organized um but it has since just spread across the whole house and there's definitely jewelry in here that i just need to donate or get rid of and it just all needs to be consolidated and reorganized so that's another Another thing that I definitely want to get done today, but I think I'm gonna switch gears before I get started with that because the other other thing that I wanna do is, so over here in the entryway, I have this big empty blank wall across from this table. And this is a pretty big space. It's probably like, I don't know, six feet across and then, you know, really tall up there. So it definitely feels like I need a piece of artwork right here. I've been looking to buy some artwork, either like a couple of pieces of art that I can like kind of put together over there or one really big piece of art to fill the space. And I've seen like a few things that I like, but it's like either something about it that I don't really like or it doesn't come in the right size or it's just something a little bit off on everything that I found. So you know me, I'd be liking to just DIY something when it when it comes down to that. So like, here's an example. I don't know how well y'all can see. Here's an example of something that I like. Very simple, modern, abstract art. That's just what I like. It's got black vertical line texture at the bottom and then like an off-white, slightly swirly texture at the top. Really, really simple. I know some people would look at this and be like, um, that's not even art, but I think it is and I like it. Kind of reminds you of 
the art that I've already created, right? If you guys have seen my other videos and stuff like that, um, I did do a video about how I did this artwork. Um, so you guys can check out that video, but I did this one and I also did this other one, which is really big. It's kind of hard to tell the true size without having somebody standing next to it. But this was the first one that I did. And then I did that other one afterwards. Um, so it's like a technique where you're able to get all this different texture. And I really like the simple black and white abstract art. That's just, it's my vibe. I think it looks good in my house. Having said all that, I was inspired by the art that I saw online. And there was also a few more. I'll put them on the screen here. I was inspired by these to go ahead and make a third DIY art piece for that empty wall. So I went ahead and bought another canvas. This is the same exact canvas, same exact size of the one that's in my kitchen, 48 by 60. It's $99, but there's usually always a coupon or a sale or something going on at Michael's. So I was able to get it, I think for like $80. And then I also recently hosted a painting party where we did this technique. So I had stuff left over from that. So this is the spackling. You can use spackling, plaster, any sort of similar thing like this. So I already have three little bottles of this and then just like acrylic paints I know I have some white in there as well I have some more in the house you could even incorporate like spray paint you could really have a lot of fun with abstract art because there's no right or wrong way to do it and I think it looks really cool when you mix different types of paint you know different types of things together to get like different textures and different you know, if you wanna have some metallic elements, some super matte, some more glossy. And then the other thing that you need for this are just tools to use with the spackling. So putty knife, even just forks, knives, little pieces of wood, anything that you can use to create texture and kind of spread the spackling around. You can really get creative with the tools that you use and just not even using real tools, but just using like random objects. But then up here in the craft room, I also have some more stuff so yeah white paint more black paint i need to stop buying black paint that's why i knew i didn't need to buy any this time because i just need to use up what i have different brushes another different tool so i'm gonna bring all this downstairs too okay boom so i have all this different random leftover stuff to work with and i think i'm just gonna go for it i think i'm just gonna be inspired by what i have here and make art for reference canvas would go like you know, something like this. So it fits this wall really nicely. I really like the impact that the jumbo canvas makes. I could have gotten like two smaller canvases and went like one, two, or one, two, or even like one, two, three, four. Could have been a vibe as well, but it's something about the giant canvas that I just really like. And I like the idea of having three of them, because it'll be one, two, three. Like as you walk into the house, you'll see all three and they'll kind of tell a story, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna make this one similar to the other two, but not exactly the same. I think it'd be really intimidating to spend like 80, 90, 100 dollars on a big canvas like this and like be scared to mess it up. But honestly, when it comes to this style of art, you can't really mess it up because even if you mess up, you can just let it dry and scrape most of it off or just paint over it. So for this art, I'm inspired by the photos that I already showed you guys, but I'm also gonna try to like be inspired by what I've already got going on in this space. So like these vases, I think can be really good inspiration. Like the texture of this one, the stripes on this one, kind of the color tones that we've got going on here. Same thing with, you know, what I've got going on over here, like the textures and the colors, which, you know, it's not very exciting colors. It's black, white, and gold, but still. So I'm gonna start by doing this plaster part now, and then I can let that dry while I go and organize my jewelry, and then I can come back and add the paint on top. This is just a slightly different product, different brand, and it's pink, but it dries white. So it also helps you know when it's dry.
Okay, so here's where I'm at with it right now. Obviously it looks a little bit wild with the pink, but like I said, that's gonna dry white and it's gonna be painted over anyway. But I did the stripey texture and very like messily, like this way and that way in this section. And then I've got a vertical section and a horizontal section. I don't know if y'all can see the vision so far, but I actually think I might leave the rest of the canvas without any texture on it. My other two canvases are completely textured. Like I covered the whole entire surface of the canvas with plaster before I painted it. So we've got like different types of texture, like these bigger chunks and then these super like squishy looking parts and then this more like crackly looking part at the top. But the whole thing is covered in texture and I did that same thing on the other one. For this one, I think it might be fun to play around with leaving part of it flat. Like I think I'm gonna paint that section black but put like a super glossy top coat on it so it'll be like a super glossy flat section and then you'll have like this type of texture and then this type of texture all mixed together so it kind of like brings in like how this vase is more of like a glossy plain black same thing with like the table being almost like a glossy black and then you kind of have this moment coming through with these stripes and then you have this moment coming through with this type of texture. So I actually think I'm done with the plaster. So I just need to let this dry before I can really put any paint on it. And I'm actually gonna leave it right here outside in the direct sunlight so it can dry even faster. All right, so it's like 20 minutes later. I took a little lunch break. I went and checked on the painting outside. It's already like halfway dry. So I think we will have good timing with that. Now I'm going to start on this project of organizing my jewels. Um, I think the end goal here is to have it all consolidated in my closet. I do have this whole drawer here which is nice to have as like a secondary place and i have these other like little jewelry thingies <laughs> jewelry holders but it's kind of weird to have like half of my jewelry over here by my bed and the other half in my closet it just doesn't really make a lot of sense so bring all of this into the closet to start definitely just spilled all my stud earrings that's fine Okay, so this is the last of the stuff that was in that drawer, but I also have stuff that was sitting on top of the nightstand that I'm also gonna bring in here. My like travel case, a few other bits and bobs. And then this stuff that I had over here on the floor for some reason. I'm running out of table space up here, so I'm gonna have to just put it on the floor right here. Okay, so this should pretty much be all the jewelry that I own. Everything from my nightstand, all the stuff that was already on top of here, the stuff that's in this travel case, the stuff that's here and here and in here. That should be all the jewelry I own. And I just need to like make this make more sense. Cause right now all of this, I don't wear this jewelry. Like this is, all of this is like really old from like 2014, like styles that we don't wear anymore. <laughs> like all these chokers and stuff that I really wouldn't wear anymore. Some stuff I like to keep because you never know when you might want to use it for like a Halloween costume or like, stuff comes back in style or whatever and it's kind of fun to hang on to certain like statement pieces statement earrings like these are still cute obviously not an everyday earring but might want to break that out for vacation then i have like my novelty pieces for christmas and then i have all this vintage jewelry which was my great grandma's all these like clip-on earrings and then these brooches which are really pretty i just don't i've kept them for a long time because i'm like what should i do with these like we don't obviously just wear brooches clipped our jackets anymore but these are really pretty and these are vintage from my great grandma as well all these rusty old rings a couple of these are vintage from my great grandma but a lot of them are broken the vintage ones and then a lot of these are just like regular old cheap fashion jewelry that has rusted this used to be my favorite ring of all time i thought this was so cool when i first got it it is actually still pretty cool in my opinion but it's like all grody now and rusty but yeah it's like random stuff like that so it's like why is all this random novelty outdated jewelry taking up the prime real estate of my jewelry section like this should be my everyday jewelry because it's right here like you know what i mean all this stuff like if i want to keep it i think i should just kind of box it up and put it in storage somewhere else like i don't know why I did that it makes no sense now as far as being able to consolidate everything and like use these other jewelry dividers I think maybe I should just use this second drawer which currently has belts 
and winter wear, like gloves, beanies, winter headbands and stuff. Oh, my Gucci belt. I really don't even wear belts. Like if I'm not wearing a Gucci belt, I'm not wearing a not Gucci belt. Like who wears belts? Do people still wear belts? I don't wear belts. So I can't tell you the last time that I touched any of these belts. The last belt that I actually wore was this one for my Halloween costume. But other than that, all these belts right here, I have not, like I cannot tell you if, number one, if I've ever worn them or the last time that I've worn them. This is a keychain. This is a cute keychain. I didn't even know that I had this. Let me set that aside. I mean, I might keep these belts because again, I do end up using them for like Halloween costumes and stuff like that, but they just don't need to be right here. I could use this for something better. So I'm gonna move this out and like winter stuff. Like I'm not reaching for that all the time. So I'm gonna move that out. That can find a different storage. Like I can even move that to a totally different closet in my house. Like I have my glam room closet, even the guest room closet, just some other storage spot for that stuff. Um, so that means I can have this be a second row for jewelry if I wanted to. And I still need to organize the stuff that I'm like putting in here. I probably need to buy like another thing like this to fill up the rest of this drawer actually. Or maybe I can just keep my little travel thing right here. But I need to take everything out of here and actually like put it away. Like what is this? Is this jewelry? What's going on? That's that. I'll have two drawers of jewelry. But for this row, I need to move all this stuff out the way. I need to pack it up and just put it in storage somewhere. But what can I pack it up in? Okay, so I have this random little acrylic holder, which has random stuff in it that doesn't need to be in it. I'm gonna dump this out and I'm gonna use this for my vintage stuff that I just wanna store away. Cause I don't really actually wear this stuff, but I do wanna keep it. So like the vintage earrings can go in here. Ouch, I just stabbed myself with one of them. Sometimes I do wear these earrings. Like, I don't know, you never know with me. I switch up my style a lot and I do like funky looks sometimes and it's nice to like have this cool, unique stuff to choose from. But of course it's not like my everyday jewelry. So then on the top section, I can put the brooches. And then I can put this, either leave it, like maybe I'll leave it on display up here on the top or just like put it somewhere else altogether, like in the glam room or something. Okay, so there's that. And then I have like, like this. This, I probably purchased this in 2000. Is this Juicy Couture? I think this might be Juicy Couture. This is probably literally from like 2008. For some reason I hung on to it. And now I almost feel like low key, this type of jewelry is back in style. Like low, 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 low key. These type of beads are coming back in style. And so it makes me want to like keep it, even though I don't know if I would personally ever wear it again, but like I might. I don't know, like this is what makes me turn into a hoarder because it's like you never know when you might wanna wear something again and you're gonna wish that you had it and then they don't really make this exact jewelry anymore. You know what I mean? Like one of a kind, I don't know. Is this cute? Do I need this? It's kinda nice, it's Juicy Couture. Like this is juicy, right? This little J, that's kind of a collectible low key. I don't know, we'll set it aside and see if we have space for her. But some of this other stuff like this, am I ever gonna wear this? I don't think so. I haven't ever worn them, I don't think. This one I might wear. This one is kind of a little bit more modern, a little bit more, it's giving me vacation. And big chunky jewelry like this is coming back in style too. Like this would be cute for a vacation look. And like this one maybe? I know I specifically got this one and this golden snake armband for my senior prom because I had a Greek goddess, like a white Greek goddess type dress. And so I was going for the Greek goddess aesthetic. Like, I don't know, it's still kind of cute for like a vacation look. Oh, this is why I can't get rid of stuff. Cause I can see a look with like everything. I kind of want to keep these, but I think I can get rid of these. So I'm going to make like a possibly keep and then like a probably giveaway pile. This little watch. Remember back in the Tumblr days when these little, like this isn't Casio, but like the Casio watches were so popular. It's broken. Literally the screen is cracked. Okay, giveaway. This is a real genuine Michael Kors watch. Ooh, I wore this every day back in the day. I would never wear this. I've kept it because it's like a nice, like $200 watch, but it don't even fit me. I would never wear this. Why do I still have this? 
I need to get rid of it. It's kind of a memento though, because this was like one of the first like nice things that I bought when I first started making money. It's sentimental, I don't know. <sighs> I'm such a hoarder. I'm sure somebody else would love to have this though. Whatever. This is like, if it's for a Halloween costume or something, cool. We could put that with the Halloween costume stuff. I'll make a separate pile for that down here. Also this, this is like Halloween costume. This is a hair piece. I had this for like a bridal look that I did one time for a bridal YouTube video that I had to do, but like I don't need this taking up space in my everyday jewelry. So anyway, I'm gonna go through all the rest of this stuff and put it in each pile, keep, giveaway, or Halloween, I guess. Okay, so I am just gonna make, this is a Ziploc bag for the donation. So all this stuff that I'm getting rid of. My Michael Kors, somebody at a Goodwill or a Salvation Army or a thrift store somewhere is gonna be very thrilled when they find this watch, I think. <laughs> somebody in the world. And I'm just gonna donate it. So this is donation so far. And then this is gonna be for my Halloween bin. I have one or two bins in the garage full of Halloween costumes and like accessories and stuff that I use for that. So a lot of this really cool statement jewelry can be used for that. Cause you never know what kind of Halloween looks I might want to do or just like Zaya might want to dress up or something. I think it's nice to have stuff like this. This I'm just gonna put in Zaya's room cause these are for her hair. I ain't got no hair to put these clips in. And then I'm still deciding on this stuff. This is the vintage stuff. And now I need to figure out like how I want these drawers to be like divided up. Like what do I want to put in each section in this one? And then also in this one. Oh, there's stuff in here that I need to like. These are earrings. Can you believe it? It's big enough to be a choker. It's actually bigger than a choker, but they're actually hoop earrings. Why did I buy these? I don't know. I just felt like I needed them in my life and I still feel like I need them in my life. So I'm going to keep them and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, but anyways, I need to figure out like how I want this to be set up, like rings, hoop earrings, necklaces, bracelets, studs. What's gonna go in each section? What makes the most sense? Let me think, I'm gonna have to play around with this for a second. up my keychain game game i need to actually like put these on my keys so i'm gonna set that aside oh this is overwhelming okay the stuff that i have the most of are like all these different types of hoop earrings a bunch of little rings and a bunch of little studs and a bunch of little <laughs> i have a bunch of little everything okay Hoop earrings. I really need to figure out the hoop earring situation. I think this top drawer needs to be for hoop earrings because that's like my main source of happiness in life. So we really need to prioritize where the hoop earrings are gonna live. Okay, I think these are all my hoop earrings. This chunk right here, this chunk right here, and all of this right here are like all my different hoop earrings for the most part. And this is what I'm reaching for every day. I'm going for one of these pairs of earrings. So I want them to be like front and center, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. I could divide them up kind of like by size or style into these little chunks. The one, two, three, four, five different little sections. And then just put like statements my earrings here. Let's maybe try that. Let's move all this out the way. Okay, so like, for example, these are like a go-to pair of my everyday like simple earrings. Same with these, but they're like slightly different. So like I could put these and these in the same box. I found some more earrings. Look how tangled all this stuff is. Oh my gosh, send help. And that's not even all of it. There was this whole other tray. <laughs> okay, I have been looking for this stuff. Okay, well, I am going to tackle the majority of this and I'll be back with an update.
All right, y'all, so I made some pretty good progress. Quick little run through. This first top drawer is basically like my bigger earring drawer. I got all my main hoops in this middle section, divided out by size and type. All nice like that. All the bigger ones are just here. Then in this back row, I have some statement earrings that I still wanted to keep because like I do wear these on Christmas, Valentine's Day, these giant hoops I might want to wear, and just like some other random statement earrings that like I'm not really going to be reaching for all the time so I put them in the bag but then in this front row I put the statement earrings that like are actually more wearable and that I do actually wear but I just don't wear them like every day I mostly wear them for like special occasions or on vacation or something like that but I do still wear them so I put those in the front then the hoops then that so this is basically like the bigger earring drawer and then in the second drawer I just have all these little studs and then ear cuffs are another thing that I wear a lot. So I just put those right here and here. So these three are ear cuffs, safety pins, extra earring backs, and these are little, um, necklace clasp things. These are all of my rings, but I do not want to leave them like this. I want a thing like this for my rings where I can like stick them in there and stand them up so you can actually see what each ring looks like. This little thing, I don't know what you're really supposed to use this for. It has like these little hooks. I'm assuming it's for necklaces, but it's so short that like all my necklaces are like longer than that. And the fact that it's laying down flat, like that's not really gonna keep, I don't know. So this is kind of useless. I might get rid of this and like replace it with a different type of holder or something. And then same thing for this. This is just like a giant open tray. So right now I just have these necklaces laid out, but this is still gonna get tangled really easily. And it's not really helping to organize anything. So I don't really like this or this, but I have all these necklaces here plus some more that are still here in the travel case and then these are all the rest of my necklaces on this little tree so then I have my travel jewelry case which I guess I can just keep in here for now or whatever this is all tangly there's some necklaces in here that I want to keep but I need to detangle it at some point these are like missing earrings where I don't have the match so I guess that's just going in the trash this is stuff that I'm gonna give to Zaya so that's gonna go in her room this is my vintage stuff. Um, not sure yet where I'm gonna keep this, but I am gonna keep it. These are the bracelets that I wasn't sure about keeping. I'm still not totally sure, because I'm also still not sure where I'm gonna keep them if I do keep them. I think I will end up having space in this drawer just because like this is just taking up space for no reason. Maybe I'll find a better organizer to be able to keep this stuff in this drawer. And even maybe the vintage stuff too, because I was just using this because I had it, but it really doesn't need this big giant thing. These are just my bracelets I'm not super big on bracelets so I only have a few so they fit nicely on this little thing that I already had and yeah so I ended up with this big bag of stuff to give away and ended up with a lot of stuff that I just threw away that means that over here by my bed in this nightstand which used to have all that jewelry in it is now like pretty much empty which it makes the most sense to make this like actual nighttime bedside stuff anyway not jewelry so like I mean I did have this sleeping mask in here and my melanin gummy so that makes sense random gucci bag that doesn't need to be in here my little room sprays can go in here my little reading glasses can go in here oh and i can keep my remotes in here so that it's not looking cluttered on the actual tabletop i need to get a decorative tissue box because these <laughs> the tissue like boxes that they come in definitely not matching my aesthetic so Wait, does it fit? Oh, wait, oh my God, these drawers are deep, so the tissues actually fit in here, that's clutch, okay. Oh, that's perfect. Oh my gosh, that just that just made my day. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna put in here is this journal and a pen. I've been meaning to actually start filling out this journal. It like asks you questions. Sadie got it for me, but it's been hidden amongst other junk. So I'm gonna actually put it right here so I remember to actually use it. And yeah, that's a nice little bedside drawer. Okay. And then the top is all cleared off. Yes, yes. Wait, hold on now, hold on now. Could I interest you? Could I interest you guys in something else that's also extremely satisfying? Something else that also fits perfectly in a drawer? Watch this. Yes, yes, yes. She is new and improved. She makes a lot more sense. She's getting there. We're getting somewhere. Okay, again, we're not gonna talk about that third drawer. That third drawer is for another day, but she's getting somewhere. Do we just not absolutely love this for her? 
She was so cluttered before. She is completely clear, nothing but a coaster. And look at that, all your bedtime essentials, all your bedside essentials. Love it, so much better. Okay, so it's actually much later now. I got busy doing other things after I got finished with my jewelry organizing. Um, went and picked up Zaya from school and whatnot. She's actually in here about to eat dinner. Plaster on my canvas is completely dry now. It dried within like less than an hour of putting it outside, but now it's like super, super dry because it's been a while. I literally had to bring one of my softbox lights in here to get some type of lighting because the lights that I have in here aren't super bright and it's getting dark now. So I couldn't really see in here too well. This is what it looks like now that it's completely dry. It's like rock hard. That's that part. And then we have this other part right here with this texture. So this is the part that used to be pink. So it just dries to like this off white color, which I actually like the color of the plaster because I like that kind of off-white color and I might leave some of that showing through. I have all this black paint. I'm definitely gonna incorporate a lot of black and then maybe mix up my own off-white by taking this regular white and putting a little bit of these like beige colors in there to make it into off-white. Maybe even adding a little bit of gold. I don't know, my other two that I did before don't have any gold, but I'm kind of feeling a little bit bold because we do have the gold in this space. Here's what I've got so far. Added black paint, beige paint, white paint, mix some paint together, put some Mod Podge down, added some gold foil leaf right there just to test that out. To really get the look that I'm wanting, I'm gonna have to do like layers, like let this dry, do another layer, cover up, tweak, et cetera, et cetera. This is definitely not the final product. I'm just getting started, but so far I'm just experimenting with different textures and colors and techniques and stuff. And I think it's turning out pretty cool so far, but definitely needs a lot more work. I just can't really see what I'm doing right now because it's like dark outside and this lighting is not great. So I think I'm gonna leave it alone for now and come back to it tomorrow during the daylight. Okay, so it is the next day. This video has gone from spend the day with me to spend three days with me. <laughs> All these projects ended up taking longer than I expected, but this is where I'm at with my painting right now. I did do, this is like three layers of stuff being kind of like layered on top of each other, like plaster on top of paint, paint on top of plaster gold foil leaf and then like paint it on top of the foil leaf a little bit just to kind of give it a lot of dimension. So everything is kind of like layered underneath and on top of each other, different textures and stuff. I'm pretty happy with it. It, it feels pretty balanced, I would say. When I do abstract art like this, like I just want the whole thing to feel balanced. I don't know if that makes sense. Like feel like it has enough things on each part of the canvas and like enough of each aspect. I don't know, I'm now trying to decide if I want to add a glossy top coat on any part of it. Cause I originally said I wanted this whole black chunk right here to be glossy. The paint itself is matte. So I would have to put a glossy top coat if I wanted that. I don't know if I want to do that or not. I might just leave it like this and like live with it. Like go ahead and hang it up and live with it for a few days and then decide if I want to like add or change anything or do the glossy top coat or anything like that. Another different thing that I did on this canvas compared to the other ones is I painted all the sides black. So it's kind of making it look like the base of the canvas or like the canvas itself was all black and then everything else is layered on top of the black. That's not actually true, but it kind of gives that effect that it's like a black canvas with white layered on top. And it also kind of just makes it look a little bit more finished to have like the black outline, I think. This one, I did continue on, you know, everything that's going on on the front wraps around the sides. So like this part's black, this part has the texture wrapped around, this part has the white wrapped around. I don't know, something about this one felt unfinished and I always wanted to get it framed with either like a thin black frame going around it or a thin, 
like metal like this brass frame I think would look really really cool but I've never figured out a cost effective way to get that done because I looked into getting it professionally framed with um, the gold and it was gonna cost like two thousand dollars or something ridiculous so I never got it framed I still really want to because this one just feels a little bit unfinished without any like frame around it this one over here is not framed and I kind of like it being unframed I think it just kind of goes with the vibe of this one to not be framed and then this one I think looks good without the frame because I painted the edges black. So I'm kind of learning as I go different techniques with this whole abstract art thing. But yeah, I think I'm gonna kind of leave it like this and just go ahead and hang it up and live with it for a few days. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned up and hung it up on the wall. So here is the finished product, at least for now. I may end up like tweaking it a little bit, but I do really like it. Like I think it turned out really good. I feel like a true artiste. I think it ties in all the elements in the entryway. Uh, yeah, I think it turned out good. So here it is. <laughs> and here it is from this angle. So you can kind of see how it goes with this table and stuff. Again, I still need to like style this table and everything like that. But yeah, I think it turned out really good i like it but yeah guys that's all i have for this video i just kind of wanted to share like i said some of the little smaller in between things that i'm doing around the house in between the bigger home decor update episodes that i do i know in those home decor update episodes i'm usually stressed out and frustrated because there's a lot of hoopla that always goes on with those bigger projects but with these smaller projects these are the things that really bring me joy, you know, organizing, making my bed, making art, like that's what just brings my Virgo soul joy. So I just wanted to share these smaller updates with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below if you wanna see more videos like this, like just showing like the little in-between things or if I should just stick to like the bigger home decor series only. Let me know and I'll see you guys in my next video.